Hello, this is Ed from practicalnetworking.net. Welcome to a new video series where I'm going to teach you about access control lists. This series is meant to be the last set of videos you'll ever have to watch to understand this concept. This is the first video in the series where we will be answering the fundamental question, what are access lists? At its core, an access control list is simply a tool you use to identify traffic. How you apply the access list then determines what the access list is actually doing. For example, if you apply an access list to an interface, then any traffic that is identified by your access list is being permitted through that interface. This is the most common application of an access list, but there are many other use cases for an access list. For example, if you apply an access list to a network address translation configuration, then whatever traffic is identified by the access list is processed through NAT. If you apply an access list to a VPN configuration, then whatever traffic you identify with your access list is then encrypted and sent through a particular tunnel. If you apply your access list to a route map, then whatever advertisements match your access list are being accepted by your routing process. If you apply your access list to quality of service, then whatever traffic matches your access list is going to be prioritized or deprioritized. So there are these and many other ways to apply an access list. Again, an ACL is simply a tool on a Cisco router used to identify traffic. Now, for the purpose of this video series, we're going to be focusing on access lists applied to interfaces, because this is the most common use for an access list. We'll be using this topology to talk through the various concepts. Our topology features a router in between the inside segment and the internet. We have a couple hosts on the inside segment and a couple hosts on the internet. Now, when you apply an access list to an interface, that access list is sometimes referred to as a packet filter. The idea there is any packets being sent out by your inside host are going to be matched against this access list to determine whether the router likes those packets or doesn't like those packets. So to talk through it, let's go ahead and shoot some packets over. Let's have host A shoot a packet to each one of the servers in our topology. In both cases, these packets have a source IP address of host A's IP address because host A is sending these packets. This top packet has a destination IP address of the top server, and this bottom packet has a destination IP address of the bottom server. In both cases, the source port is randomly selected by the client, in this case, host A. Now it's not explicitly listed in this illustration, but we can assume that this is a TCP packet. This top packet is destined to TCP port 80. This means that that is probably a web request. And this bottom packet is destined to TCP port 443. So we can assume that is an HTTPS request. Now we're going to use these two packets to talk through various concepts for access control lists. Starting with the two types of ACLs that exist. There are two types of access control lists on a Cisco router. They are standard and extended. The difference between these two is simply which fields in the packet they are using to identify particular traffic. A standard access list is only matching on the source IP address, which means I can match both of these packets by identifying traffic with the source IP address of 10.0.0.11. That's the only option you have with a standard access list. Now this does create a limitation because it only allows you to provide complete trust or complete distrust. So here's what I mean by that. Let's say you had a requirement that said allow host A to speak to this top server, but don't allow host A to speak to this bottom server. Well, with the standard access list, all you can do is say either permit the source IP address 10.0.0.11, in which case host A can speak to both servers, or deny the IP address 10.0.0.11, which means host A is not allowed to speak to any server. So that is a limitation of standard access list, is that you can only provide complete trust or complete distrust. That is why an extended access list exists. An extended access list allows you to filter on many more fields, five of them to be exact. The source IP address, just like a standard access list, but also the destination IP address, the source port, the destination port, and the protocol. The key benefit there is you can create access list entries that say allow host A's source IP address to speak to this server, but deny host A's IP address from speaking to this server. So you can be much more granular in how you match traffic. So these are the two types of access lists that exist. You can create either of these types of access lists and then apply them to a particular router. Now, when you apply them, you can only apply them once per interface, per direction, and per protocol. So let's talk through that. By interface, I mean the actual physical interface of a router. If you recall, our router had two interfaces, one of them facing the inside segment and then the other one facing the internet. Well, I can apply an access list to a specific interface. 
Now why this is important is because depending on which interface you're going to apply your axis to, the packet might look a little different. For example, let's just say this router is performing network address translation. That would mean these two packets on the other side of the router might look a little different. Notice the source IP address has changed. Well, if I'm applying an axis list to FA01 and I want to match on the source IP address, this is the source IP address I need to match. But if I'm applying my ACL to FA00, then this is the source IP address I want to match. So it's important to know where you're going to apply the axis list before you actually write the axis list statements. The other thing to consider is the direction the packets are going in. To discuss it, let's go ahead and get rid of this yellow packet and let's focus on this blue packet for a minute. This blue packet is the packet that host A sent to the server. At some point, the server is going to respond. When that server responds, the packets are going to look like this. The response traffic is simply a flipping of the source and destination in the initial packet. Notice the source in the initial packet is the destination in the response packet. Either way, notice that both of these packets are being processed against one interface, FA01. The difference is one of those packets is going out of that interface and then the other packet is going in to that interface. So when you're applying your access list, you have to choose not only what interface you're applying it to, but also the direction. That's going to affect how you write your ACL statements. For example, if I want to match this packet, I'll be matching traffic as it comes in to FA01 and I'll be matching against, say, this source IP address. Whereas if I wanted to match this packet, I would still apply the ACL to FA01, but I'd be applying to traffic as it goes out of that interface and I'd be matching on this source IP address. The last thing to consider of where you're applying your access list is the IP protocol. And by that, I simply mean IPv4 or IPv6. A single access list will either only filter IPv4 traffic or IPv6 traffic. You can't have a single access list filtering both. So if you wanted to filter both v4 and v6 traffic, you would have to create two different access lists and apply them to a particular interface in a particular direction. Now I'll be looking at the application of access lists to router interfaces in more details in a later video in the series. For now, the key takeaways from this video are these right here. We discussed that an access list is simply there to identify traffic, and then how you apply the access list determines what the access list is doing. We then discussed that an access list applied to an interface is sometimes called a packet filter, and that you can only apply an ACL once per interface, per direction, and per protocol. And finally, we discussed the two different types of access lists that exist, and the difference between them are the fields that they use to match traffic on, with a standard access list only matching on the source IP address, and the extended access list matching on source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port, and protocol. In the next video, we'll be looking at the syntax to configure access list on Cisco routers. But as far as this video, your key takeaways are on your slide right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.